and hello my dear students i'm going to cover the capacity of parties from the angle of the people who are of sound mind in the previous session we have learned that those people who are competent to enter into a contract are divided into three parts the person who has attained the age of majority is eligible to enter into a contract the person who is of sound mind is also eligible to enter into a contract and the person who has not been debarred to enter into a contract is also eligible to enter into the valid contract so three sets we have learned that is age of majority number 1 soundness of mind number 2 and the qualification set by the law is number 3 today we are going to understand agreement by persons of unsound mind our indian contract act 1872 states that the person must have attained the age of majority and as per section 12 of indian contract act 1872 it is the for the purpose of entering into a contract a person is said to be of a sound mind if he is capable of understanding the contract and being able to assess its effects upon his interest so for a valid contract both parties must be of sound mind now soundness and unsoundness have to be talked upon in depth any individual may be considered of unsound mind if that person does not have cognitive or decision making capacity so when they are not able to apply their own brain to understand the purpose of the contract nature of the contract terms and conditions of the contract whether because of any reason may be as mental illness as developmental delays or any related issue if any treatment is going on a person who has signed a contract under the influence of drugs alcohol is considered as temporarily of unsound mind so such contracts when they are created will not be considered as valid contract now you need to understand it is very very important person must be of sound mind let us understand if person is of a sound mind but when contract is created at that time if person is of unsound mind what is the resultant factor what is the result outcome in that case the result outcome is contract is considered as void that means generally the person is of sound mind but when contract is created at that time he is of unsound mind then the result outcome is void contract what if take the another a case if it is generally of unsound mind but when contract is going to be created he or she is of sound mind then the contract created have a result outcome as valid in order to understand this point i'll be giving you one example let's see if i have gone to attend a conference in the conference i met with a publisher 
Before this conference, my treatment was going on. I was suffering some sort of mental illness because of pressure, because of lack of work-life balance. So before the conference, I was on the pills. The moment I was fine, I was given a fitness certificate by my psychologist, I have attended that conference. And in that conference, I met with a publisher. Publisher offered me to write some contents, some chapters of a particular subject. And I agreed. So my contract with the publisher is valid. Because I was of unsound mind, but at the time of creating a contract, I, I am of a sound mind. So unsound of previous will not impact the result outcome of a contract. That means when we are considering this as an example of unsound mind in a previous time, sound mind when the contract is created, then that sound mind will make contract valid. On the other hand, take another example. A person is of sound mind in the previous. But when contract is going to be created, he or she is of unsound mind. So if a person is drunkard and in, in, that, uh, in that environment, you have created a contract for your own benefit. Let's say there are 10 shops that belong to one property dealer. In one fine day, you have invited him for a party. He has taken alcohol. Now, alcohol, wine will make your mind sleepy, will not be able to understand the terms. Now, once he is in the condition of sleepiness, that person will not be able to understand that you are dealing with one of the shop. So you said, I'm, I want to buy your shop. And he said, okay, fine. So the purpose of the contract, terms of the contract, consideration involved in the contract will not be a clear aspect to the property dealer. In that case, at the time of creating a contract, he is drunkard, he is not of a sound mind, then such contracts are not valid. They are void. So when we are saying this soundness versus unsoundness, the result impact will be changed. That means if person is of sound mind, but at the time of creating a contract is of unsound mind, then that unsound mind will make a contract void. If person was of unsound mind, second instance, and is now of sound mind, will make a contract valid. So you need to understand the time when person is entering into a contract. At the time, if he or she is of sound mind, so time of creating a contract is important irrespective of past timing. So past consideration, past timing, previous era is not important. What is important is current, that is the present time. If at present time, person is of sound mind, is making a contract valid and at present time person is of unsound mind then that is void completely void third set is the persons who are disqualified by law when we are talking about disqualification these are those people who are debarred by the law when I say disqualified, it means there is some sort of civil liability, criminal liability or both 
and proceedings are going on in any of the law. So it's, it does not mean the proceedings are just going on as per Indian Contract Act 1872. It may be the person is disqualified either by Seals of Goods Act, Indian Partnership Act, Indian Penal Code. So any kind of proceedings in reference to Indian Acts, those people will be treated as disqualified if they fall under these two provisions. Number one, if the law does not accept any person, then in that case he cannot enter into a contract. Does not accept any person means that the person do not belong to India as a citizen. So, it if person is not existing in the eyes of law, then those contracts are created are void. So, secret contracts, you know, the people who are involved in trafficking, child on killing, honoring or supplying the drugs, right? Those secret contracts which are prohibited as per Indian Penal Code is actually those people who do not exist in the eyes of law. So they are the ones who are not going to accept that cases. Law should qualify a person to be part of the contract. So law will qualify only on the basis of certain considerations. As such, attainment of age of majority is one consideration. As such, person of sound mind is another constraint of contract. Any person who is able to perform, assess, if influence the contract in a right manner at a right time is qualified by law. So generally, any, any law who prohibits any person to enter into a contract, those people are disqualified. That means to whom any civil proceedings are going on against them, any criminal proceedings are going on against them or any civil plus criminal proceedings are going on against them or if they are not existing as a person in the eyes of law. So person disqualified by law cannot make any contract as valid. That is any minor or unsound mind apart from these two people, any convicts, any people who have included their sovereigners, ambassadors, enemy, align, insolvents are disqualified by law. Let us understand one point very important that is insolvent. Insolvent is a person who has opened up a business but who was not able to run that business into the profitable segment, who was not able to pay off their debts. So when a person is unable to pay off their debts, then resultant factor is they are qualified to follow the proceedings of insolvency. So adjudicator is appointed and accordingly business assets and liabilities are settled off with a certain percentage. Like a person is able to bear only 25 paisa in a rupee. So insolvency is a legal process. So thereby court supplies the information through different channels that this person is declared as insolvent. So they used to paste the notice of insolvency outside his or her business in, in different newspapers. Nowadays, it is an electronic era. So, onto different digital platforms. So, we have MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. 
So we know there are e chalans, e proceedings, e adjudications, e registrations nowadays. So Ministry of Corporate Affairs take the responsibility to supply the information onto different channels that this person, this company is declared as insolvent. So if you enter into a contract with an insolvent, then that contract is void. So persons who are disqualified by law, they, they are getting published into different channels. So channels are from traditional manual to electronic. So they are the ones where people are disqualified, debarred to enter into a contract. And if they enter into a contract, then such contracts are not valid. Such contracts are not legal. Such contracts cannot be sued in any of the court, whether it is district, high or supreme. If you are creating a contract with lunatic person, lunatic is who is not able to control his or her mind. Look at this picture. When we talk of lunatic, it is the one who is not able to understand the effect of the contract, the nature of the contract, the proximity to perform the contract. So he is the one who is just as lunatic. That means when a person is trying to have a suicide attempt, that person is lunatic. So you cannot create a contract with lunatic because mental quotient that is MQ plus IQ, intellectual quotient, intelligent quotient, both are missing. So lunatic is a person who is not able to assess the impact of the contract. After all, contract involves two parties and contract is for a purpose where parties need to perform the obligation, fulfill the obligations. So they must know contract is created for this purpose, for this time, for supplying of these things with these considerations. And if person is not able to understand all these four, then the contract created is void. So lunatic is a person who is having the MQ that is mental quotient and IQ that is intelligent quotient is missing. So lunatic is not able to assess the effect of the contract. He or she is the one who will not be able to perform for the contract. I give you an example. There, there was a person who wants to sell his car. So, he has advertised in a newspaper that my car model, my car number, my car registration and the condition of car is this and I am going to sell it for rupees 2 lakh. So, this publication of information is for general. He has not specified who can apply. So, one of the person who is not of a sound mind called called up i want to buy your car right so over the phone things are not clear right so that may sound very very right so when that person meets him in reality that who has advertised it, the information let's say ram has advertised the this information and one of the customer mohan calls up to Ram that I need this car. So Ram fix up a meeting. While fixing a meeting, Ram meets Mohan and able to understand that he is not aware of any of these things like what car is, what is meant for. Generally, when you talk, you assess the mental quotient of a person. So do you know uh, if, if they, that person is asking any particular question in terms of engine, capacity or airbag? So those questions make a sense 
if person is asking so you are selling a car and mohan is asking you the question related to truck so that is the ability to assess the mq and iq so you have assessed it that he is asking you about the truck instead of car so mental quotient is not present intelligent quotient is not visible in that case if you enter into a contract with mohan then that falls under the category of lunatic second is idiots yes when we talk of idiots again we need to be very very specific that if we are creating a contract with idiots it will result into void so you know idiots are those who are not able to assess the current phenomena so they may be behaving abnormal they may be sounding abnormal and they are the ones who are not able to assess evaluate analyze the contract in depth so if you create a contract with these people again it is void third picture is again very important drunken or intoxicated persons now when we talk of drunken or intoxicated person they are the ones who are taking some sort of pills using some sort of alcohol wines and they are in that zone only so you know when we talk of these people we are assured to have something in order to control it we have rehab centers so when a person is in excessively into that zone mind will always always be of unsound mind so drunken or intoxicated person are such which are going to have into that zone let us see take this example that rajiv has been in a lunatic asylum for 10 years the doctor say that he is improving he there are times he communicates he behaves like a normal person also now he is 25 years old so let me ask you does rajiv have capacity to enter into a contract now answer is first aspect rajiv has attained the age of majority that is 25 years second is doctor say he is of sound mind in the intervals of time he communicates he understands he assess he talks sensefully second aspect so with these two things for 10 years he was lunatic asylum but he can enter into a contract so what is important important is timing so when we are understanding that how these are going to relate in terms of capacity to enter into a contract that is when the person is into the zone of communication assessing evaluating analyzing and performing contract is to perform so contract have two parties for a purpose with a consideration so when we talk of these general valid points in terms of essentials of a contract if that falls under the capacity to enter into a contract the competent to enter into a contract is the one who is going to deal with these scenarios to make a valid contract what if if person is drunken and in the morning he or she is fine so at that time they meet different people they communicate they assess they enter into a contract those contracts are valid but the moment they are using that intoxicated alcohols drugs 
then in that case those contracts will not be valid so i'll be giving you certain certain questions and answers to make my lecture interactive let us understand that if any person who is at the age of 17 years 11 months 20 days and he goes to enter into a contract so the information in the contract bulletin is that we are looking after these people and the last day to apply for this contract is one month he went there he took out the information he took out the form he filled out the form and submitted after 28 days because there was a deadline to submit the form after a month within a month so after 28 days he submits his application for that contract so when there was a contractor who was checking out the application that contractor saw that this person should be called for the interview they called up they met with the person so this contract is of singing contract where the contract is of one year and they that singer is supposed to sing for that form for one year so singing round was all cleared then there was a round of intellectual discussion that was all clear and then looking out the scenario when form was out and when he applies what do you see what do you think whether the person is capable to enter into a contract the answer is yes that means when he went to collect the form he was 17 years 11 months and 20 days and the last day to apply for the form is within 1 month of the publication of information so he submitted the form after 28 days so by that time he was 18 years and again 10 days so 18 years is important so such contract is very much valid what if if person is 17 years 11 months 20 days and he submits the application after 5 days still there are 5 more days to attain the age of 18 in that case the contract is void so what i am trying to explain you the contract has to be understood from the angle of soundness of mind attaining the age of majority and the people who are not disqualified to enter into a contract that means when we are talking of these three subsets which are important which are pivotal which are critical and crucial to enter into a contract to make a contract valid is prerequisite so capacity of parties should be understood from the angle of age of majority number 1 soundness of mind number 2 and people qualified by the law number 3 so in those set of skill competence ability is what capacity is created capacity is emerged for so i would like to conclude my session in terms of explaining what is capacity who can enter into a contract what is the position of the minor and how to create a valid legal contract so capacity is equal to your ability plus competence plus skill set age of majority is equal to 
generally 18 years but in certain exceptions where court is taking care of your property where court is acting as a garden guardianship of your infant child in that case age of majority is 21 years instead of 18 years and if minor is entering into a contract yes minor is receiving the benefits those contracts are valid but if minor is bearing the compensation or asking for the necessity then in those cases court decides these contracts are not valid but for the necessities contracts are valid so if minor has taken up some necessity item from the shopkeeper let's say some sort of sugar rice then shopkeeper is liable to get the amount so for necessity items minor is responsible minor is liable so position of minor is very much valid when minor is at the receiving end and if minor is at the paying end just exception is necessity except for necessity he cannot be asked to pay the compensation he can be beneficiary promisee soundness of mind is the one where person is able to have mq and iq to check out the contract to assess the contract to see the obligations of the contract and very very important where we must know that if any person who is disqualified by law such as lunatic idiot drunkard convicts align enemies sovereigners brand ambassadors these people are or any person who civil liability criminal liability or both are going against him or her in that way those people are disqualified by law so when you create a contract with these people minor unsound mind or disqualified by law then in that case contract is void ab initio from the beginning thank you thank you so much enjoy learning enjoy reading and have fun thank you Thank you.